Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In today's video I'm going to do a small study on feathers. I'm using a parrot as an example. Since a lot of this is very repetitive, I divided the study into different sections. Two feathers in detail, a few more tips with a more sped up version of the drawing, and the last part is the finishing touches. Hope you find this helpful. I already started with a red color for my base and added a darker shade on top of that. When you put on your first layers, make sure to use a light hand because you have to add a lot of colors. At the bottom I used a bright yellow and a bright green right next to it. Don't worry about the transitions between the colors, as your layers progress, this will become more natural. Switch to a slightly darker green as you move upwards and an even darker one at the top. With the darker one I'm also going to go over some of the more lighter green. To blend this out I'm using a blending stump, for one this allows you to work a little bit more precise and two it allows you to press harder. In a nutshell this gives you more control than blending with your fingers. Then I'm adding bright yellow to fill up the rest of this section. In the middle I'm going to add some orange to connect the red on the left side to the yellow on the right side. I also added a little bit more green here because it needed to be a tad darker. For the right section of this feather I'm repeating the process with the greens. Remember that when you sketch or trace your subject you don't have to go overboard with details. If you get into bigger shapes like the feather and the crease you have more than enough. For me personally my feathers are better when I divide them like this and then finish one individual feather at a time. To break down a feather in the middle which I mentioned before as the crease you have what is called the main shaft or the stem. Then what I called the hairs before are called in official terms the barbs. This is important here because this is v-shaped. So this is the direction you need to follow when you are putting down your individual hairs. Here at the top I'm back with that bright orange and yellow. I'm also adding in this little bit of green. Then I switch it to a darker green to add in the markings that show the separation between each individual hair that makes up a feather. So for the darker ones just press a bit harder and then blend a little less. And do the reverse for the lighter ones, just use a lighter hand and smudge it a little bit more. This is how you'll do the entire feather. Here on the left side I'm using a darker reddish brown and I'm also overlapping a little bit in with the green here to add some definition. For the most of the green part I'm using a matching darker green. Remember to switch up between lighter and harder strokes. At the bottom you can press relatively hard to indicate the end of the feather. For the rest of the feathers it's a mix. And just like when you would do fur, with feathers you also need to look how they flow. After I've put down my darker green, I'm moving over to a bright lime green to repeat this process. Remember that in pastel you work from your darkest to your lightest colors. Use this over the underlayer places that match this color, like the more yellow spot on the left. The parts that are more orange, I switched my pencil to a more orangey tone. And for the bottom part here, there is just a little bit of blue, so I'm also going to add in some markings in this color here. I just blend this a little bit with my finger and then this one feather is done. I'll just show you the reference piece I'm working from so you can see what I'm going for. In the meantime I'll just add the blue parts for this little piece on the left. If you like my content so far, subscribe to my channel and if you like my videos a lot, put on the notification bell so you always get a reminder when I post a new video. If you've done this already or you are doing this now, I'm really grateful for your support. It's because you subscribe to my channel that YouTube shows my video to more people like yourself, which in turn allows me to help more people and also grows my channel. Moving over to this dark reddish blue feather, I'm first laying down my base layer. I know this looks like black but it's actually a really dark blue. It's best to use your black sparingly because for the most part when you would use black it would just be too strong. The middle part I'm filling up with a more reddish tone, something like a deep purple. Moving more to the right side I'm switching to a dark blue. I just left a stripe in there blank where I'll use a lighter blue. I'm actually using two lighter blues to get a more accurate color. Here I'm using that red that is a little bit brighter but I'm going to mute it back down a bit with that deep purple I used before. For the bottom part I'm adding a bit of that red again and I'm going to blend this a little bit with my finger. And I just repeat this layer process I did before with the lighter and the darker markings which form your hairs or more accurately your barbs. I'm working from my dark to light again and since this is more red I'm using a bright red instead of blue for this part. I know I just said work from dark to light but here to finish this feather I'm going to go over this with my dark blue again. This is just because this is a darker area and by now I created something a little bit too bright so I need to darken this up again. 
In the middle section I add the stem in with that same dark blue and some lighter blue markings around this to finish this section. Now even though I would love to go over this entire piece, I think it would just take way too long. And you will basically just see me repeating myself over and over again. So what I will do instead is the following. I will just let this play at a fast tempo and in the meantime I will just give you some tips. By all means, if it's helpful for you, you can slow down the video to see more accurately what I'm doing. Just make sure you put me on mute so my slow down voice doesn't bother you. I won't be offended, I actually think my wife would love it if I came with a mute button. My first tip is to divide your bird into individual feathers you'll finish. For me personally, my feathers are better when I divide them. Most of the time each feather will be slightly different from one another and this way I can avoid using too many similar colors. Granted, if your bird is a parrot, this isn't likely, but for other birds this can easily happen. Also, by using a feather after feather approach, you'll have an easier time layering them on top of each other the way their coat is structured. My second tip is to first start loose and then refine. First take the time to build up your underlayer and then with each subsequent layer you'll refine the shape and look of your feather. For instance, I don't add in the edge until the later stages. My third tip is all about colors. You may wonder how to choose your colors. For this, you can use a color picker tool or just your own eyes. And I have to say this parrot was quite an easy example as you can see the difference in colors distinctively. So for starters, you have to play with your colors. Like I said, here this was easy. But more importantly, you have to play with different tones as well. Remember how the top feather I demonstrated had a total of three different shades of green for the underlayer alone. I also used different tones when I added in the hairs. It's this alternating between colors and tones that helps enrich the contrast in feathers. And my fourth tip is to be sparring with detail. What I mean by this is the following. You don't need to add in every little thing you see. Just adding a few details, hairs or barbs is more than enough. If you've played with the contrast like I mentioned in the previous tip, you will have an overall picture that illustrates realism. If you go too far, you have something as overkill. I just need to show you how to get in the final touches. Like I said before, contrast is really important and when you look at each individual feather, this is looking good already, yet there is still something missing. So what I'm doing right now is adding in some contrast underneath the feather to give it a more three-dimensional look. Remember feathers stack on top of each other. If we didn't add this in, the end result would look rather flat. If you haven't already, you can always subscribe to my monthly newsletter through the link in the description below. Not only will this keep you updated about my videos that I post, each month you'll also receive 4 reference pictures you can use to your own liking. I hope you liked this video, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate your support as this helps to grow my channel and reach other people like yourself. Hope to see you again next Friday and in the meantime, have a great week.